If you're a coach who's wanting to launch or grow your business, it's so easy to get discouraged or influenced by all the noise out there. All the flashy business coaches telling you you can make 10K a month in 90 days or less. Sometimes it's hard to cut through it all and figure out what's just marketing and what's for real. What does it actually take for me to get coaching clients? What are fair expectations? And how do I know if I'm on the right track? If you've ever wondered that, keep watching because I'm about to pull back the curtain and share six inconvenient truths most business coaches don't want you to know. Hey, my name's Jason Moss. I'm a multi six-figure business coach, and I've helped thousands of coaches around the world launch and grow their businesses. And look, the insights I'm about to share with you in this video, super important to your success as a coach. But when it comes to getting clients, if you're looking for a roadmap you can follow in order to attract two, three, four high-paying coaching clients per month into your business, I put together a free client attraction guide that walks through a lot of my best advice in order to make that happen. You can get it completely free. I'd love to share it with you. Just click the link above or in the description down below. The first inconvenient truth most business coaches don't want you to know is that success takes time. Truth is, you know, as much as we love to market the stories about our clients who were able to hit, you know, 10K their first month and inside our programs. And the reason why we generally share these things is because it makes people like you more likely to buy our programs. The truth is that for most of the clients I work with, just speaking personally, it takes time. It can take months or longer to see results and to actually grow your business. It took me several years to hit six figures in my first coaching business when I first started in 2016. There are so many skills and so many things that you're needing to learn, especially if you're a new coach, marketing, selling, how to show up online, social media, how to how to get on a sales call. I mean, these are all things that depending on your experience and your background and what you're bringing to the table will influence how quickly you move. And it's normal that it's gonna take some time for you to get started. So don't go into a coaching program or don't go into launching your business expecting that your first few months are gonna be great. The truth is a lot of the early days are tough. A lot of the early days you're experimenting, you're trying things, you're failing a lot. When I look back over all of the businesses that I've started, coaching businesses in different niches, the first few months were always particularly painful. When I look back on those times, like they're not my favorite times because you're kind of in the messiness of trying things and experimenting and figuring out your marketing strategy and figuring out what lands and what people want to buy and what people don't. And over time, it gets easier as you keep showing up. But this is not like a thing where you you just like flip a switch and suddenly you've got like thousands of dollars pouring in your bank account every month. And, and I wanna share this with you because you probably already know this, but at the same time, it's so easy to get dissuaded and, and discouraged by you know looking at uh, other business coaches and, 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 and their websites and testimonies, and even my stuff. You might look on my website, you see a lot of stories from our clients who are hitting you know uh, big income goals quickly. And those stories are real and true. And for every person like that, I can tell you that there's a lot of other people who come into my programs that it just takes more time to actually get started. The biggest thing that I see influence how quickly people move. Number one, just reality is what skills you're actually bringing to the table. I work with some of my clients who like they're already really good at sales. They have a background in sales or they've already been coaching for a while. And so it's like, we're not starting from ground ground zero where we're building on the skills that they already have. And those people generally tend to move forward a lot more quickly. And then there's other coaches I work with who are like, I don't know the first thing about marketing. I've never run a business before. I've never gotten on a sales call. Obviously it's gonna take more time if you're in that place to really hone things in. So if you are a coach who's in the early stage stages of your journey and you're not getting results right away, you're feeling frustrated or discouraged, or you're feeling like if it's been you know a couple months and things haven't quite landed yet, like something's wrong, sometimes the strategy does need to change. I'm not saying that there aren't things that you're doing that need to shift, but also just remember that like this is a journey. It takes some time. This is not something that's going to happen overnight. And this is honestly a big truth that most business coaches don't talk about because it's not, it, it doesn't help me sell coaching programs to say this, but I want you to be aware of it because I think it's one of the biggest keys to actually just staying motivated and staying on the course even when things get tough. Number two, there is no copy and paste system. <laughs> <laughs> for every business coach you see out there, everybody who's saying, you know, just take my system and you just copy and paste it in your business. You don't even have to think. You just literally take these templates and it'll, you, you know exactly what content cre to create. You don't even need to create content. You could just download our content and use it in your business instead. Look, there's so many people out there selling this idea 
that running a business can be something where you just kind of turn off your brain and you invest some money into some formula and some system that you just apply and don't really think at all and just kind of, you know, take somebody else's model and 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 they tell you exactly what to do and you do it and it works. Honestly, if this were true, I'd be making a lot more money because I'd be selling one of these systems. But the truth is it just doesn't work like this. Running a business takes a lot of thinking. It takes a lot of uh, problem solving. It takes a lot of um, you trying things and experimenting and every niche is different and every person is different. You know, there are certain marketing strategies that might work really well for some of my clients and for other clients, they just don't make sense depending on you know your niche or just your strengths and who you are. Some people love showing up on video every day. Some people don't. Some people have full-time jobs. Their marketing strategy needs to be tailored to that. Other people have 40 hours a week to be able to focus on this. You know, so much of what I've learned through helping so many different coaches and all different niches, all different lifestyles is that there is no cookie cutter cut and paste system. There is nothing that exists that is going to work for everyone that you can just take and replicate and apply in your business without thinking, without actually doing the work. This is an inconvenient truth, I think, for a lot of people because some people are looking for that copy and paste. In most corporate environments, in most jobs, generally you show up to do a job that's pretty much defined by somebody else and you're slotting into a system that somebody else created. And that's normal when you're working for somebody else. But when you're an entrepreneur, when you're running your own business, when you're launching growing your own business, you're building that system. You're the one who's the architect. But at the end of the day, a lot of this really comes down to you stepping into the role of entrepreneur, which means not looking for somebody else to give you the answers or give Give you all the answers, but to actually step into that role of I'm the one who's creating what the structure looks like, what the system looks like. Same thing with content. I see a lot of coaches who are looking for like, oh, can I just have a template? Can I just like, give me the Mad Libs? Give me like the thing where I can just plug and play in my niche and, and post it on the internet. It doesn't work like that. You know, so much of marketing is about personal branding. It's about bringing who you are to the table. It's about a showing people you and that can't be templated. It can't be something where somebody else gives you the formula. But if you're looking for like a template, if you're looking for like the cookie cutter thing, you're probably gonna be disappointed because the truth is it really just, it doesn't exist. And part of entrepreneurship is you really owning the journey of not looking for somebody else to give you the answers, but looking for how do I step into that identity of being the entrepreneur who can figure things out along the way. Third inconvenient truth. There is no shortcut for hard work. Look, I'd love to tell you that if you, you know, invest in one of our programs, you just wake up the next day, you can sit mojitos on a beach, work like three hours a week and, and uh, you know, just watch the money roll in. <laughs> and it would probably sell a lot of programs, which is why most business coaches uh, love to talk about that. But here's the truth. In my experience, launching and growing a business has been one of the hardest things I've ever done. It takes a lot of work. And I think most people aren't prepared for the amount of uh, work that it actually takes. And when it comes to getting to that place where it's like you can have more freedom and expansiveness and flexibility with your time, that's absolutely something that you can build towards. You don't have to be hustling and grinding and working 80 hours a week. I wanna be super clear about that. I definitely don't do that in my business today. And this is not what I what I teach or what I encourage. I think balance is really important. At the same time, you know, if you have this idea that you just kind of invest in a program program or start your business and then a couple weeks later you're gonna be waking up and working like 10 hour weeks and making like 20 grand a month it, in my experience it just doesn't work like that now on the flip side you can get to that place if that's what you really want it's absolutely possible and it happens through a lot of work <laughs> because in order for you to leverage your time, in order for you to get to that place where you can free up that time, you've got to build a team. You've got to have automation and systems. You've got to have a proven business model. You've got to have an offer that works and a niche that, that is responsive to what you're selling. All of these things take time. And initially, there's a lot of energy and time invested up front into building those things so that you can get to that place where you can take time off. So all this being said, there is no shortcut for hard work. And don't you know go into launching your coaching business or growing your coaching business expecting that it's gonna be easy and you're not gonna to have to work hard in order to make that happen. On the flip side, I think a lot of this work is really fun. I actually really enjoy like the process of building a business and a lot of people find that too. Some people are like, ah, I don't really wanna deal with the business stuff. But personally for me, like I love the craft and the art of learning uh, marketing and learning how to sell. This is stuff that's exciting to me and it may not be exciting to everyone. You know, there are a lot of the, the parts 
parts of the process that, that you know, you can really enjoy. And it's not that all of it's gonna be a grind or a slog, but if you're expecting it to be easy, you're probably gonna be disappointed. Number four, being an entrepreneur is not for everyone. I speak to a lot of coaches who are thinking about enrolling in our, our flagship program, Coaching Launchpad, and they're wanting to become coaches, they're wanting to step into running their own business, being their own boss, and oftentimes people think about the freedom. They, they think about the flexibility of being able to own their own schedule and, and control when they work and what they work on and, and to be able to work from anywhere and, and to be able to work with clients they love. And there are so many upsides to being an entrepreneur. And I've come, come to this place in my life where I'm like, I am a purebred entrepreneur, like through and through. I've been launching growing businesses since I was like 11 years old. And the idea of working for somebody else, like I've done it before, it just does not work for me. I know that I'm an entrepreneur. And I also experience this because I work with a lot of coaches who are new to entrepreneurship and they step into the journey of running their own business and they find that it wasn't what they expected. You know, running your own business, being the one in control is both freeing and it also can be overwhelming and intimidating. And it's like, stepping into like a blank canvas where no one else is telling you what to do. And so many people crave that. And there's that desire for that freedom. And then they step into that and they're like, whoa, like nobody else is like giving me a roadmap here. Like I, I it's a little overwhelming. I need somebody else to tell me what to do. I feel like I'm, I'm having trouble being self-led. I'm having trouble holding myself accountable because I'm used to being in an environment where other people kind of create that scaffolding for me. And I'm also juggling so many different hats as an entrepreneur. I'm no longer, my job is no longer doing just one thing. It's doing like 50 different things. And that can be super overwhelming too. I don't mean to discourage you from entrepreneurship by sharing this. I, I just wanna be real with you that this is what entrepreneurship is. And I think some people, you know, experience that and they're like, this is not for me. And I've seen, I mean, my, my partner, Kimberly, a you know, great example. She was a, a medical social worker as she was working in a hospital. And early on in our relationship, she decided to launch a coaching business. And she spent about a year coaching and was actually like externally pretty successful. She made over $60,000 in a little over her first year as a coach. Now she had a, a business coach as a, as a partner. <laughs> so that definitely didn't hurt. I'm not going to take credit for all of her success. I think she, she really rose to the occasion. But after going through that journey about a year, she stepped out the other side and, and decided decided, hey, I, I just don't know, at least at this stage in my life, if entrepreneurship is for me. I feel like I'd, I'd rather have that stability of working for somebody else. And she ended up getting a, a job again. And now she's uh, working uh, a great job that she really enjoys. I just want to normalize that like entrepreneurship, like we have this idea, like it's glor glorified. It's like this thing that like everybody thinks that they want. But you have to be prepared for what entrepreneurship really is, which means you have to be prepared to be self-led. You have to be prepared to hold yourself accountable. You have to be prepared to be a, a problem solver and to be flexible and, and adaptable and to be able to, to hold many different plates in the air at once, to assume many different responsibilities and to, to be able to, to learn new skills and to be able to kind of ride the waves and the ups and downs. And I love these things about entrepreneurship. I don't always love them, there's not every day where I'm like, yeah, this is great. Some days I'm like, oh my God, it'd be so much easier to work for somebody else. I think in my heart, like I, I feel like these things, they're a part of me. They're a part of who I am. And I, I look, if you're unsure about the path of entrepreneurship, I think that's normal too. Just try it. It's okay if it's not for you. Like you might not be the person who's like the natural fit for running your own business. And that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'd encourage you to explore that journey because I think, you know, talking to my partner, Kimberly, and walking out the other side, she's like, I would not have replaced that for anything. I learned so much. I grew so much through that process. So nothing is wasted. It's not like you're going to go on a, a journey, launch your own business, and then step away and be like, wow, that was a waste of time. No, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to grow a lot. But, you know, let's not kind of romanticize this path of entrepreneurship. Let's like take a cold hard look at what it actually is. And I think that's important to just face that fully and, and to ask yourself like, hey, is this really for me? The fifth inconvenient truth is that you're gonna spend more time marketing than you will coaching. I hear from a lot of coaches <laughs> when they think about launching a coaching business. It's like, I just wanna wake up every day and coach. I wanna wake up every day and, and get to mentor and guide and help people. And I love that part of my job. I also spend more time marketing today and more time selling 
than I do coaching. And for most coaches, that's the case. When you're growing a business, when you're running a business, a lot of your time is going to be invested in showing up on social media, creating content, putting yourself out there, getting on sales calls. These things are things that a lot of coaches aren't prepared for. And they have this kind of romantic idea is just waking up every day and coaching people full time. Or they have this idea of like, oh, I can just outsource all the marketing and I can take all that stuff off my plate and just find a company who's gonna do that for me so I can just wake up every day and be a coach. It doesn't work like this. When you are stepping into the role of running a coaching business, you are stepping into the role of being a business owner. You're stepping into the role of being a marketer and a salesperson and a strategist in your business. And all of these hats are important hats in addition to what we could call the technician role of being a coach, actually delivering on the service that your clients are, are paying you for. All of those hats are equally important, if not more important in many cases. And I think a lot of coaches just aren't prepared for the amount of time and energy and investment in those things. So don't go into your coaching business thinking you're just gonna be coaching all day. Uh, at the same time, this does not mean that you have to like hate your job 80% of the time. Again, I love marketing because it's communication, it's expression, it's getting to connect with you. I love sales. It's a, it's a deeply intimate, um, heart-centered, even spiritual process to be able to get on the phone with someone and walk them through that journey to committing to a, a higher level of identity within themselves. This is this beautiful stuff. I love doing this work. So it's not that you, you have to hate 80% what you do, but let's not kind of have this like romantic idea like, you know, coaching is is just going to be coaching all day cuz it's not. And number 6, the last point is get ready to grow. I don't want any of this to be discouraging for you. As a matter of fact, I think for the right person, this can be inspiring and motivating. Hearing these things can be like, yeah, like I'm up for the challenge. I also want to be real that Launching a coaching business, growing a coaching business, is gonna be challenging, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna bring up a lot of stuff for, for you. And it has for me, I would just speak personally, like, again, it's been one of the hardest things I've done. What I love most about the journey of entrepreneurship and growing a business is that it has inspired me to grow in ways that I cannot possibly have ever imagined before I got started. I love personal growth, and most of the coaches I talk to are the same way like the thing that we really get off on is becoming more. It's becoming a more expanded version of ourselves is waking up every day and, and being more of who we really wanna be. And the thing about entrepreneurship and the thing that I love most about it, even more than you know all the other things, getting to serve incredible clients or the income or the freedom of flexibility and all those things are great too. It's who I've become through the process of running my business. Who I've become through scaling a multi six figure, soon to be seven figure business, it's blown my mind in ways I could not have possibly imagined. I've become so much more, I've cultivated qualities and characteristics of, of resilience and the ability to face adversity and I've learned so many new skills, things that are so like valuable and useful in so many different areas of my life. I've become a better person through the work that I do. And I think that if you're looking for that, if you're up for that challenge, if you're up for that growth, if you're up for becoming more, I think the path of entrepreneurship, the path of running your own coaching business can be a beautiful uh, place to be. If you're not ready for growth, if you're not ready to, to be challenged, then you're probably gonna be disappointed and you're probably gonna be discouraged and you're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna wanna give up. Let's just you know look at it for what it is. This is an incredible path to be able to grow, to be able to evolve, to be able to become more. And that's what I love most about this journey. So if you're up for that, I think you're in the right place and uh, you know I'm so excited for what's up ahead for you. So I hope the six inconvenient truths you learned in this video were helpful for you. If you're looking for more guidance when it comes to launching, growing your business, getting high paying coaching clients consistently, two, three, four clients per month, I put together that free client attraction guide that walks through my roadmap for being able to do that, the roadmap I've shared with thousands of coaches at this point to help them do that. And I'd love to share this with you. I think it'll be really helpful when it comes to getting clients. You can download this completely free. Just click the link above or in the description below to go get that right now. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna love that one too. So click the link on the screen to go check that out and I'll see you in the next video.